is the head coach in his fourth season as the head man in Peoria, Illinois. John Calipari in his sixth season, his team 32 and three. And let's take a look at the starting lineups. Pay attention to Patrick O'Brien. He's the seven footer up top and he will battle Joey Dorsey as Sean Williams and Rodney Carney are two of the great athletes in America. Our officials, Carl Hess, Ted Valentine, and Brian Kersey. Tonight's game is brought to you in high-definition television by Harris Corporation, the world leader in broadcast systems for high-definition television and mobile media. Gus Johnson along with Len Elmore. The Bradley Braves against the Memphis Tigers. Bradley, the lowest remaining seed in the NCAA tournament. Memphis, a number one. And Lenny, what should we pay attention to early? Well, if you take a look at Bradley again, Patrick O'Brien, the seven foot center. He's got to be the center of attention. He's the one having a terrific uh, tournament. And here, Memphis, rock and roll. They got to set the tempo, play 94 feet, use their athletes. For Bradley, they beat fourth seeded Kansas 77 73 in the first round, then fifth seeded Pittsburgh 72 to 66. Their defense leads the way and they also know how to play aggressive defense without fouling they're 15 and 0 this season folks when they commit less fouls than their opponents and the braves controlling the tip they turn it over well that was just a pure case of jitters right there although the memphis denial the quickness on the wings had something to do with it but again you mentioned about bradley it seems like every missouri valley conference team plays some defense and Bradley led the Missouri Valley Conference in field goal percentage defense blocks and steals. John Williams to the basket and he banks it in. As he gets by Marcellus Somerville. Inside Bennett off the glass high no. Loose ball Roberts had a hand on it can't track it down. Here's Darius Washington Jr. The point guard. And Joey Dorsey across the lane lost that one to Roberts with the rebound. But Dorsey had an isolation right there, and he gives up about four inches to Patrick O'Brien. So it's going to be difficult for him to score inside. O'Brien, a pretty good shot blocker and certainly an intimidator. O'Brien coming off a 28-point game. He has it inside. He's got a great jump hook blocked by Dorsey, tied up. Possession arrow favors Memphis. Well, it's going to be important for Joey Dorsey to push Patrick O'Brien out of the paint. That time, O'Brien with a pretty good advantage inside, but he brought the ball up. Watch where the ball comes from. Comes from his waist up high, and Joey Dorsey does a nice job of getting a hand on it. John Calipari, the head coach of the Memphis Tigers, and what a year it's been for them. 32 and three, most wins in a single season in the history of the school. Kearney off the mark. And for Memphis, this is their first trip to the Sweet 16 since 1995, their first ever number one seed. Now Robert make that O'Brien again on the baseline this time. Comes up short, Dorsey with the rebound. Much better job of Dorsey pushing O'Brien away from the basket. So Washington slicing down the lane. Well, that's what you'll get from Darius Washington Jr. One of the best penetrators in America. Off the bounce, very difficult to contain him. And you got to step up and provide an awful lot of help. Full court pressure already by Memphis. Bennett deep on the baseline, no. But Bradley having difficulty not only getting shots up, but obviously finding the mark. And that's a little bit of jitters right here. Darius Washington Jr. knocks down a three. Memphis takes a 7-0 lead. Timeout Bradley. 17.45 to play in the first half. In leadership, no word is more important than trust. You can trust Chevy, the brand more Americans choose. See why during the Chevy NCAA March Madness event. Like Silverado Halfton Crew Cab with more interior room than Ford F-150 Super Crew. Get a 2006 Chevy Silverado Halfton Crew Cab LS two-wheel drive starting at $22,990 after cash back. Or get it for less during the Chevy NCAA March Madness event. See your local Chevy dealer. Some things you just can't copy. Like Wendy's spicy chicken sandwich. A big, juicy, whole chicken breast filet. 
covered with our own fiery blend of cayenne, chili peppers, and spices for more meat and more heat. Satisfy your craving for spicy with Wendy's original spicy chicken sandwich. Don't clown around with copies. Do Wendy's. Do what tastes right. Five, four, and the crowd goes wild! Let's put your kids' dreams within reach. Lowe's. Let's build something together. Shop today and you could instantly win a VIP trip to the 2007 NCAA Men's Final Four or one of millions of Lowe's prize cards. Name's Larry. I'm the health inspector. Cleaning up restaurants. There's a snow cone vendor out there not wearing a bra. Has never been so dirty. Is that a violation? No, but it makes me want to get a snow cone. Larry the Cable Guy, health inspector. Get her done. Rated PG-13. Starts tomorrow. It's over. Done. We nailed it. Real Coke taste with zero calories. And now, before I lock up the secret formula, I'd like to share it with you. Sure. Coca-Cola Zero. Try it to believe it. I save 50% on my phone bill. Vaughn is $24.99 a month. For local and long distance calling. It's a better home phone service. Voicemail, caller ID, call waiting are all included in the price. The voice quality is great. I can keep my same phone and phone number. Vonage has low international rates. It's easy. Vonage, leading the internet phone revolution. I don't think you can. I know you can. I know you can. And here's what it's going to take. It's going to take 40 minutes of unbelievable concentration, mental preparation, mental toughness, composure, and unbelievable energy for 40 minutes. Give me everything you got. There is no tomorrow, okay, unless you lay it all on the line today. And when that 40 minutes is over, I want them to know who Bradley is. That's right. Hey, and I want them to know what Bradley basketball is all about. Oh, 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 oh. And Jim Les has been preparing his entire career for this moment. He was a ball boy at Bradley from 72 to 75, then starred on this team. And that was our Southwest Airlines sideline report. Led this team to the NCAA tournament before going into the NBA. Inside Somerville, missed the first, gets his own rebound, knocked out of bounds, and will head the other way. And Jim Les tried to motivate his team and tell him, obviously, it's going to take a tremendous amount of poise, and the poise is going to be tested here. Bradley unable to get a clean look at the basket, but when they have, they've been way off. Again, a case of jitters and a case of Memphis defense. Memphis has great athletes, but they play terrific defense, holding teams to 38% shooting on the season. Almost turning it over, skip pass, Anderson for three. And Bryant comes down with the rebound. Somerville inside, and he's called for the foul, hooked his man. And Marcella Somerville, terrific inside-out threat. One of the best three-point shooters on the team, but also you saw there on the post-up, Paul for a hook. Again, Bradley trying to get some offensive advantage. And look at the defense right here. Full court, man-to-man -man pressure. Again, attempting to create some turnovers, get some easier looks since the half-court set's not working. Almost to travel, and Anderson throws it out of bounds. He thought Rodney Garney would cut to the baseline. Bradley 0 for 5 to start this game. Three turnovers. Bennett banging it off Anderson. So Bradley seeded number 13, the lowest remaining seed in the NCAAs. Well, again, all of these teams lost in the regional semifinals, never went past the Sweet 16. Bradley looking to be the first in that bunch. Bennett leads. And it's tapped up and in by Patrick O'Brien. A sophomore from Blaine, Minnesota, coming off that 28-point game. 
Now Dorsey backs him down, drop step, putting square his shoulders, knocked out of bounds, and will head the other way. Well, not only did Joey Dorsey not square his shoulders, he never really looked at the basket. He was so intent on creating contact with Bryant, trying to draw the foul, instead of looking to score the ball. And O'Brien does a nice job, Lenny, of staying out of foul trouble. And again, he's one of those guys that probably didn't play an awful lot. And again, another foul, offensive foul. Tony Bennett. It looked like an illegal screen. But back to the point about Patrick O'Brien, doesn't look like he played an awful lot of pickup basketball, schoolyard basketball, because he doesn't have a lot of bad habits. The one bad habit that I pointed to in his first possession offensively was bringing the ball down. And that's something that you rarely see when O'Brien gets the ball on the block. Memphis a one versus Bradley a 13, the lowest remaining seed in the tournament. Washington off the dribble, rims off O'Brien with the rebound. His fourth. Ruffin doing a nice job of trying to force Washington to his left. He wasn't successful then, but he made Washington veer out further than he wanted. Somerville with the step no. Tapped around. He gets his own rebound. And, and lays it in on the other side. And he screams to his mates, come on. Bottom line is they are going to have to persevere. Right now things aren't working as well as they'd like. Somerville, the leading scorer on this team. After some early jitters, Bradley trailing 7 4 to Memphis. America's brand salutes college basketball's best, the all-new 2007 Chevy Tahoe. services for the greater good. Roundup Extended Control. It kills tough weeds fast. It also prevents. Just spray wherever you don't want weeds and you won't get weeds for up to one, two, three full months. Up extended control. Weeds have met their match. This is Gary Poole. Married for 10 years, but didn't know it until he had fresh brewed premium roast coffee and a McGriddles. It was like he was seeing his wife for the very first time. It's like we're newlyweds all over again. Wake up and smell your life. Enterprise rent a car for our trip? Yeah, they're everywhere. Even airports. See? Airports too. Hello, welcome to Enterprise. Let me help you with that. Wow. The friendly service of Enterprise is everywhere. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Greg Clark and Seth in New York will get you back to Oakland after we check in to what's happening in Atlanta. Glenn Davis of LSU has left this game, and LSU has survived surprisingly well. Yeah, their athleticism has really taken over. J.J. Redick, as you see there, a little bit frustrated. Only three points so far. One for five from the floor. Sheldon Williams has been terrific, but they're going to need a lot more than just Sheldon Williams tonight. Tyrus Thomas, Glenn Davis, both with two fouls for LSU, but Darnell Lazar has come off the bench and scored six points. And you're right, Seth, the athleticism, points in the paint. All Tigers so far. Each team has turned the ball over six times, and LSU 
As we said, Glenn Davis, we said in the pregame show, was going to have to carry a big part of the load. The two early fouls, he went out at the 850 mark, and the Tigers have not as yet suffered. Well, you see the big graphic there, points in the paint, 16-6 LSU. Nice steal here. That is Paulus, it looks like, scoring off a turnover. LSU with a 23-16 lead, five minutes to play in the first half. Let's get you back to Oakland and rejoin Gus Johnson and Len Elmore. Somerville, deep three, off the side of the rim, 7-4, Memphis with the lead. And the Tigers are getting scolded by John Calipari. Sloppy with the basketball, and that is turnover number two for the Memphis Tigers. Somerville comes out of the game. But it's been missed opportunities from Memphis. Bradley shooting two of 11 from the field. Four turnovers, now five. Andre Allen with the steal and finish. Tigers take a 9-4 lead. Bradley out of the Missouri Valley Conference. And a foul called on the wing on Allen. Officials really tight to start this game with the foul calls. Well, again, it still comes down to for Bradley being able to run their stuff. Memphis applying an awful lot of this old fashioned man to man pressure. He's making it difficult to get it inside. O'Brien backing his way down, spinning, nice play, and the foul. Well, excellent job of using his body, and that time O'Brien able to set up deep. With Kareem Cooper playing him, O'Brien able to kind of move a little bit, uses that left shoulder to block him off and goes to the basket strong. O'Brien continues to improve in this tournament. You see the numbers against Pittsburgh. Prior to that against Kansas, eight points, ten rebounds. Excellent free throw shooting for O'Brien against Pittsburgh. He was eight of nine from the stripe. Nine seven now, Memphis. And there's a substitution. And a steal on the inbounds. That's Bennett. Both teams struggling. Andrews has it stripped. And it's picked up by Anderson. And that's the substitution, Zach Andrews for Patrick O'Brien, although at a time when O'Brien was just starting to get into the ball game. But I think Jim Lex feels that he wants to give his guy some rest as the starting center for Memphis is on the bench resting. Douglas Roberts to the basket. He's a freshman from Detroit. Off the mark. Bradley with the chance to tie it up with the two now. Ruffin, nice look inside, and we've got a tie ball game as Lawrence Wright finishes. He's a 24-year-old senior. Bradley slowing down now. And Douglas Roberts steps on the baseline out of bounds. Near the end of tonight's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. To honor their determination and an outstanding play, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. America's brand supports America's best, Chevy, and American Revolution. Well, we mentioned before about Memphis had lost opportunities at a time when Bradley, Bradley really hadn't gotten into the game, had some early game jitters, and also the Memphis defense was stifling. Memphis never really able to capitalize on the opportunities given to them by their defense, and now they're in a ball game. This kid with the ball now, Will Franklin, a junior from Houston, Texas, has been playing excellent basketball off the bench as the backup point guard. He has Bennett right hard down the lane. Top jump shot, no. Andre Allen, the speed demon, into the front court. Carney rises, can't get the bank. Dorsey, nice rebound. Nope. And he has it stolen away by Bennett. Bennett straight to the basket, lays it up and in, and Bradley has its first lead of the game. They have shaken off the early game jitters, and we have 12.47 to play in the first half. And they've got this lead with their two best players on the bench, O'Brien and Marcella Somerville. Somerville in foul trouble, O'Brien taking a rest. Somerville with two fouls. And it looks like the smaller team, the quicker team that Bradley's fielded has been able to apply pressure and has gotten Memphis now a bit confused 
and sloppy on their offensive end. Defense is their game. The Bradley Braves lead the Missouri Valley Conference in field goal percentage defense. Block shot, Sean Williams rejected. They're second in force turnovers, and they led the conference in three-point field goal defense, giving up only 30% this season. Bradley on an 11-2 run inside Carney, and he ends the run right there. And that's what Rodney Carney gives you. You know, people talk a lot about his ability to shoot from beyond the arc, but he's an inside-outside threat and probably the most athletic and complete player in America. Ties it at 11. Now Bennett, speed demon out of Chicago, down the lane, and he gets the bounce, count it, and the foul. And Tony Bennett will go to the line. He's a senior out of Westinghouse High School in the public school league in Chicago, the school of the great Mark Aguirre, who went on to DePaul. So the basket counts, and Bennett picks up the charging foul. Bradley with a 13-11 lead. Obviously, the rule is the ball left his hand before the contact was made. So you count the bucket and you assess the foul. Sean Williams, such a talented freshman from Memphis. Washington driving. And it counts. Boy, you talk about quickness. I mentioned again, quickest off the bounce. Defender couldn't get there. We're tied at 13. Back after this. There's a line we all cross in our lives. It's the line between what can I have and what do I want? We each arrive at this line in our own time. But whenever that time comes, things will change just a little bit for the better. Right down to the beer you drink. Enjoy the golden, rich flavor of Miller Genuine Draft. It's beer, grown up. Check it out. I got the NCAA March Madness, baby. You don't have March Madness. What? Look at me. Can you follow your favorite teams with just two clicks of a button? No. Is your bracket with you at all times and constantly updated? Oh. Then you don't have March Madness. You have March Sadness. Well, check this out. Singular Media Net. Latest scores, breaking news, bracket challenge. If you've got Singular, you can personalize your phone for college hoops. You want to see what else I painted? No. Singular. Raising the bar. Some things you just can't copy, like Wendy's original spicy chicken sandwich, a big, juicy, whole breast filet, covered with our own fiery blend of peppers and spices. For more meat and more heat, don't clown around with copies. Do what tastes right. This may be the most important moment of your life. Rolling Stone magazine says V for Vendetta. He's explosive. Natalie Portman He's dynamite in the movie that will pin you to your seat. V for Vendetta. Rated R. Now playing. Nothing is more powerful than the truth, and the truth is more Americans choose Chevy than any other brand. See why during the Chevy NCAA March Madness event. Chevy Impala has more standard horsepower and better V6 fuel economy than Camry. Get a 2006 Chevy Impala LS sedan with an MSRP starting at $20,990. Or get it for less during the Chevy NCAA March Madness event. See your local Chevy dealer. In 1979, Congress authorized the formation of a contingent of elite special forces soldiers. I gotta start at square one every day with you guys to prove myself. Our missions and our very existence are closely guarded secrets. Yes! The Unit, CBS Tuesday after NCIS. Where can you see Tiger like you've never seen him before? I'm, I'm nervous about this. <laughs> Where else? On 60 Minutes, Sunday. Greg Clark and Seth in New York. A quick look into what's going on in Atlanta as they approach a minute 15 to play in the first half. LSU with a four-point lead on Duke. They've dominated the action in the paint other than Sheldon Williams, who's been terrific inside for Duke. But Darnell Lazar has come off the bench for LSU and scored 10 points. Glenn Davis and Tyrus Thomas both have two fouls for LSU. The reserves have done a good job, and Duke is falling into this habit, as well as Sheldon Williams' plan right now. That's Lee Melchione for three, is the fact that Williams and Reddick have 19 of their 25 points. This is not the type of balance that's going to get you past an athletic team like LSU. McRoberts, Paulus, Sean Dockery, somebody else is going to have to score. 
Duke is going to have to find an answer for LSU down low and inside. Exactly, and it may be tough to do that if McRoberts is shaking up. He took a tough spill there. There he is, Josh McRoberts, right on cue. Heard us talking about it and decided to get in the middle of the paint. <laughs> he's been uh, he's been aggressive. The shots just haven't fallen for him. And Greg Paul's, I mean, they are aggressively looking for their shot. But given how poorly Duke has played this half, I think you know to go down two or four points uh, would pretty much give him a lift going into halftime. Well, if you're LSU, you're thinking about Tyrus Thomas and Glenn Davis. Davis being on the bench. There's Daryl Mitchell with a follow up. Points in the paint continue to favor the LSU Tigers. LSU leads by four. Half a minute to play there. We send you back to Oakland to rejoin Gus and Lynn. 11 12 to play in the first half. Memphis with a 16 13 lead. And the Tigers have led by as many as seven. Bradley went on an 11 2 run of their own to take a two point lead. On the floor, Sean Williams, Joey Dorsey, Carney, Andre Allen, and Darius Washington Jr. For the Tigers out of Conference USA, 13 and 1 in conference play, 32 and 3 overall. Their only losses coming to Duke, Texas, and UAB. Allen the kick, Carney, pure. Well, Andre Allen is truly a pure point guard for this team. He's the one that sets up. He's the one that's creative and gets people involved. Darius Washington Jr. more of a lead guard who can score and make plays. Franklin, and he answers. Will Franklin never got to play basketball until his senior year in high school. Went on to a junior college, Kilgore Junior College, and has really found a nice home at Bradley. Bradley playing pretty tough defense now. Denying, overplaying, getting Allen caught. Washington, eight points now as he back pedals on Ruffin, pick and roll, spinning inside, make it ten points. And that's what I mean by Darius Washington Jr. is really a lead guard who can create for others, but he can more than that create for himself. Coming up on singular at the half, Greg Gumble, Clark Kellogg, and Seth Davis will take you out for a live look at the LSU Duke game, and they will get you caught up on all the latest tournament news, plus a singular Naismith update. That's all coming up on singular at the half. Antonio Anderson checks back into the game. Now he goes back to the bench. Now he will re-enter <laughs> as Darius Washington with 10 points. Heads to the sideline. Gotta always pay attention to process. Gotta step to that scores table, introduce yourself before you allow it. Now Bryant to the basket and he draws a foul. That's Dorsey. Who picks up his first. Now look at the game summary. Well, Memphis obviously shooting a high field goal percentage because they're taking the ball and driving to the basket when they don't turn it over. Bradley, the early turnovers really hurt them. They've rebounded from that. And speaking of rebounding, they've doubled Memphis on the board. So O'Brien goes to the line and is part-time, folks. He is studying to become a chef. As he misses the first, he had a chance to serve as an intern at Johnny's Italian Steakhouse in Peoria and according to the Bradley people he makes a world famous cheesecake miss both fly with the rebound well he better be cooking up something in the paint <laughs> right here for Bradley because he is the major threat they have and I'm surprised they don't go to him enough look at Joey Dorsey continually trying to push him out of the lane inside right jump hook. And he gets the bounce. Well, Lawrence Wright is the most explosive player for Bradley. He can be a factor as well off the bounce and using that length once he gets into the mid-range. Wright's dad is a master sergeant in the United States Air Force. Carney again from downtown. O'Brien going up high, knocked out of bounds by Allen. With NCAA March Madness on demand, you can watch live tournament games from outside of your viewing area on your computer for free. Sign up now at NCAAsports.com slash MMOD. Marcella Somerville returns to the game, playing with two fouls. He's the senior from Peoria. As the Bradley Braves come 
up the floor, Bradley in Peoria, two and a half hours south of Chicago, two and a half, half hours north of St. Louis, and three hours from Indianapolis, Somerville deep in the corner, and he buries it. And I tell you what, a lot of coaches wouldn't have brought Somerville back in the game with two fouls for fear of him getting his third and lost for the bulk of this game, but the way Bradley has been playing. Carney tried to tomahawk one, lost it, but it still goes in. O'Brien contesting the shot. Now Somerville posting up on Sean Williams. But the way Bradley had been playing without Somerville, I think Jim Letts felt he could take that chance. His team holding its own. Ruffin, son of a coach. Ball knocked away, stolen Sean Williams. Watch out. And he lost it. Looked like he was tripped. No call. Ruffin the other way. It looks like he was tripped. Sean Williams. Ruffin, the teardrop, no. Let's take another look at Sean Williams. Well, again, on the drive. Uh, well, maybe, nope. He just missed time that one. No question about it. It was a bad jump in between a layup and a dump. Couldn't make up his mind. I thought I saw Daniel Ruffin maybe touch him from behind. But once you get up that high, it's really no excuse. You lay that ball in. Washington, left-hand runner, no. O'Brien with the rebound. Memphis not getting the offensive glass presence that they need. They take a lot of shots, a lot of guys driving with athletic stuff. Yep. You need follow-up. Carney. You don't need follow-up for that, though. And that's Memphis on defense. The quickness, the athleticism, the anticipation. Bradley with 12 turnovers in the first half, and we still have 724 to play. Five-point lead for the Tigers. A one versus a 13. Twy to the basket. And he's fouled from behind. But Rodney Carney, to say he's a high riser is an understatement. Memphis by five. Keep your men back. Inside Man is a heist thriller like you've never seen. Bank robbers escaping on a plane does not add up. A cool cat and mouse game. I think you're stolen. Why? I don't know. Inside Man has plenty of twists to keep you guessing. Give his wife whatever she needs. You want me to do something unethical? Just when you think you figured it out. This thing stinks to high hell. You haven't. You will do whatever it takes to help me. I believe we understand each other. Come on, this ain't no bank robbery. Inside Man. Waited R. Starts tomorrow. First African American basketball player to come to LSU. My oldest son played. My youngest son is playing now. That's my whole locker right here. He did all the games. I used to look at him every time I made a play. We just kind of had an understanding of what needed to be done. It's very exhilarating to see your sons participate. I'm Carlos Temple and I love college basketball. Memphis with the lead over Bradley, a one versus a 13 here in Oakland, California. 7-14 to play in the first half as J.J. Twy, a junior from Verona, Missouri, steps to the line. He is the youngest of nine kids. Seven boys who all scored at least 1,000 points at Verona High. But he's here because he's a defender. So with 7-14 to play in the first half, Memphis started the game on a 7-0 run. Bradley answered with an 11-2 run as Twy misses the second, but it's pounded down by O'Brien. And I'm surprised nobody's jumping off the bench from Memphis. It looked like that ball was still on the rim, certainly in the cylinder. Memphis has made Bradley pay for turning the ball over. Bradley's turned it over 12 times. Memphis recorded 13 points off turnover. Cooper inside with the left hand. And that's Kareem Cooper's game right there. The little short lefty jump up. Now Bryant really working hard on Cooper. Bradley not looking for him. The guards just can't seem to get him the ball. Somerville across the lane. And a foul coming up. 
that will go against Dozier. He picks up his first. Gus, you mentioned Memphis 13 points off of 12 Bradley turnovers. That's pretty much the name of the game because Bradley's been able to, at least in the last several minutes, start getting their offense going. And Somerville back on the floor after picking up two fouls. He's been the leader of that. Memphis forces 18 turnovers a game on the season. Tuesday on the Amazing Race, the competition is so intense it will leave you breathless. The adventure of a lifetime continues Tuesday on CBS, America's number one network. Somerville, who began his collegiate career at Iowa, decided to transfer. Went to a Juco, now at Bradley. He has eight points and two fouls. 27-24, Memphis. Inside. Don't make that Cooper. I don't know if that was a pass or a shot. No, that was a shot. It was a wide open shot. But again, you got to have your focus, and that's the problem with Memphis sometimes. Fall in love with that three-point shot on the long shots instead of grinding it out, going inside to their strengths, using what I said, their assets, their athleticism and quickness. Reverse layup pinned on the glass by Carney. Picked up Anderson. He's got Washington on his hip. Leaves it for him. Darius down the lane. No, tipped up and in by Dozier. And that's Tiger basketball right there, pushing it and getting people to follow in the event of a miss. And Bryant, right. Somerville calling for it, guarded by Dozier. Now Wright slashing the left hand, high and in. Nicely done. Well, I told you Lawrence Wright, very explosive player. He's 6'4", but he's got a seven-footer's wingspan and a 44-inch vertical, so you combine that. That's the guy that can make a difference in this ball game if Bradley decides they get isolations and he gets aggressive to the basket. John Calipari wants a timeout. Memphis is led by as many as seven. We've got a three-point game in Oaktown. And a look at the tournament summary. Well, we had a chance at Dayton to see Michigan State and Ohio State go down and to lower seeds, and that was absolutely surprising considering those teams were made to go far in the tournament. And obviously the Missouri Valley teams, two of them in the Sweet 16, First time in history, and the reason is because those teams play defense. They've got players, and obviously, they're not intimidated. Memphis Tigers, Washington, big first half, 10 points. Dozier slashing, comes up short, batted around. Joey Dorsey, and he's fouled. O'Brien picks up the foul. Other Missouri Valley teams in the NCAAs this season. Well, again, Northern Iowa just outsized by Georgetown. And Southern Illinois, West Virginia style of play. It's very difficult for anybody to match up. But Wichita State and George Mason, you know, that should be the crowning achievement for anyone who truly believes in the so-called mid-majors as to whether they belong or not. Those two teams, terrific defensively. And just an awful lot of heart. You just want to see a game like that. Unfortunately, they're going to play against each other. One of them, obviously, is going to go home. They faced each other this season. Mason winning. Tony Skin hit a big shot toward the end of the ball game. Both free throws off the mark for Joey Dorsey. And he struggled with his free throw shooting on the season. 40%. Keep that in mind. Under five to play. Memphis by three after leading by as many as seven. Tony Bennett back in the game, along with Franklin in the backcourt. Wright wants it on the box. It's kicked by Carney with 14 on the shot clock. And there's the mismatch right now. Lawrence Wright has got Darius Washington Jr. on him. Wright, I mentioned, 6'4", 44-inch vertical, 7-foot wingspan against Darius Washington, who's listed at 6'2", and probably has to push everything to get to 6'2". He's also a very good offensive rebounder, had 14 points, 9 rebounds, 7 offensive rebounds against Pitt. Bennett, tough shot, bangs it down, it's a 3, and we're tied at 29. And folks, if you don't think a Missouri Valley Conference team like Bradley belongs here, they could have folded, they could have wilted when Memphis went on their little run, denied, overplayed, got steals, scored in transition. But Bradley hung tough, and they hung tough with their defense until their offense got going. Coach Jim Les telling his team, we are the little engines that could. Washington off the mark, up high, Dorsey, and up and down. So that's a travel. 
Well, Joey Dorsey having an awful lot of trouble finishing. Another offensive rebound for him, but he just he lost the handle. And he's not finishing strong either. He's using that big, strong body to get there, but he's kind of just lost in the ball to the basket. He's got to attack the win. Bradley has led by as many as two. Looking for the lead right here. Bennett, rise and fire. Short. Sean Williams rakes it down. Andre Allen, Williams, Dorsey, Anderson, and Rodney Carney. Again, we mentioned Allen, the true point guard. He's the one that will set it up for others. Not really looking for his own shot. Dorsey drops step. Left hand, no. O'Brien, another rebound. He's got 10 already. And we still have 325 to play. Make it 326 to play in the first half. 29 apiece. Memphis Bradley, a 1 versus a 13 in Oakland. Enterprise rental car. Two top scorers for Bradley, Somerville, and Bryant. The numbers thus far. Braves with the basketball. Somerville has been their most consistent scorer in the NCAAs. 21 against Kansas, 18 against Pitt. He also had six rebounds in that game. But Patrick O'Brien is the guy that adjusts defenses, and he needs to get as many touches as he can because of the very reason. Once he gets it, Memphis defense starts to scramble. Then he can find some open folks, get some mismatch opportunities. Bryant has that one rejected. Good weak side help coming from Dorsey. Well, this is one of the reasons why Joey Dorsey is in the game, to block shots. And again, patrol that rim. Dorsey with some fine elevation, long reach, good defender. And puts a body on O'Brien, makes it difficult for him to get it where he wants. Right on the baseline, no O'Brien with his 11th rebound. And that time I talked about Dorsey doing such a good job, and he doesn't block out. Now Ruffin, Franklin in the backcourt, right pops out. He's got Twy with him. JJ tries to turn the corner, cut off by Anderson. Ten to shoot, now right. And it's deflected out of bounds by Sean Williams. Bradley trying to do everything they can to get a mismatch, particularly inside the lane. And then we talked about Wright and his length and explosiveness. We talked about O'Brien. Those are the two guys that need to be posted up. Seven. Bradley's got to find them. Seven to shoot for Franklin, knocked out of bounds again. As you take a look at the shooting percentages, Bradley is 12 of 27, 44%. Memphis 13 of 29. The turnovers have been a problem for the Braves. 13 turnovers in the first half. Well, imagine if they didn't turn it over, what the score might be. Franklin, high arcing jump shot, no. Here comes Andre Allen, along with Dorsey, Williams, Carney, and Anderson. Inside, Big Joe flushes it down. His first field goal of the evening. Curling. Bryant calling for it. Nice catch. Knocked away and stolen by Allen. It's deflected by Twy. And knocked away by Dorsey to Anderson. Under two minutes to play. And that was a good decision to kick it back outside. Didn't have numbers. Dorsey with the ball in the short corner. Isn't about to make an offensive move. Sean Williams quiet offensively. Anderson lets it go. Count it. Anderson with the three-point field goal. His first basket of the game, and Memphis goes up 34-29. And again, a good find by Andre Allen on the skip pass. Ruffin for three. Off the heel. And here's where Memphis has had to learn throughout the season how to play at different speeds. They know how to run 94 feet, get out and play athletic. But here with a time and score situation, they're trying to build a lead so they go to the half court. Williams fouled on the baseline. And Sean will go to the line and shoot two. And that's the big reason why they went to the half court because of Sean Williams' height advantage at 6'9 with Lawrence Wright, despite his length and his ability, still a mismatch down low. 
Lawrence Wright picks up his first foul. Well, Sean Williams misses the first free throw. Over 73 million viewers are hooked on Survivor next Thursday. Survivor returns with an all-new episode on CBS, America's number one network. What a talent. Sean Williams, only a freshman, 6'9", 14 points a game, 6 rebounds, 45 blocks, 47 steals this season. And he's one of two from the line as Williams heads to the bench. And he's replaced by Robert Dozier, another talented freshman from Lithonia, Georgia. Ruffin stripped and fouled by Allen, reaching in. And that will send little Daniel Ruffin, sophomore from Peoria, to the line. Daniel is has an older brother that's a pretty good player, A.J. Guyton, who starred at Indiana. Also, his father, Dan, played at Bradley and is the head coach of Peoria High. Subs coming in. Well, Allen picked up his second foul. Both of these teams substitute very liberally. Bradley, nine players, average about 14 or more minutes per game. And Memphis has got nine players, averaging 11 plus minutes a game. And for Memphis, no player averages more than 27 minutes per game. So John Calipari continues to shuttle guys in and out, looking to wear down opponents. Tigers up by five. They're the top seed here in Oakland. Later on tonight, it will be Gonzaga and UCLA. UCLA a two. The Zags with Adam Morrison a three. West Coast bragging rights on the line for that one. Here's Anderson, rises way off the mark, right with the rebound, and they'll play for one shot. Ten seconds to go in the first half. Right pops out on the wing with five to go. Slapping. Can't get the bounce. Dorsey with the rebound. And that's the end of the first half. The score, 35-30. Memphis with the lead. We'll send you to Greg Gumbel with Singular at the half after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching CBS Sports on our 25th road to the Final Four. I mean, it's time for the Juniper Network's Nothing But Net Shot of the Day. Harold Mitchell on his own from way downtown. When it comes to secure and assured networking, Juniper Networks is your best shot. Time to Juniper your net. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half. Sponsored by Singular. Raising the bar. Welcome everyone to our studios here in New York for Singular at the Half and the Memphis Tigers with a five-point lead on Bradley. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg and Seth Davis. One other game taking place, that out in Atlanta where LSU is leading Duke 31-28. They're underway in the second half. Let's take you there live and join Dick Enberg and Jay Billis. Here at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, we're underway in the second half, 18-11 remaining. And the big story is two quick fouls are called, one against Davis, one against Thomas, who set out most of the first half with two fouls. And the top two scorers for LSU have three in a hurry to open this second half. And the game is down to a two-point contest. Duke still trying to keep the ball out of the hands of Daryl Mitchell, their primary handler. Tasman Mitchell, the 6'7 freshman, doing a lot of the ball handling. And here's Daryl. Darrell Mitchell inside and an acrobatic move as he has his eighth point. Such a good basketball player, so strong off the dribble, really a two guard that has converted to play the point, and he has had a fantastic season. Reddick in a body check called against Temple. His second foul and uh, the fourth on LSU to open the second half. Able to turn the corner off Sean Dockery. J.J. Reddick trying to come over and slide in, take the charge. Reddick pulls up for a 15-footer, won't fall. Now Reddick, uh, uncharacteristic uh, shooting coldness here in 
the NCAA tournament. He's two for eight in the game tonight. Well, they've made him bounce it on every possession. It's been rare that he's gotten a clean look. Darrell Mitchell tries the three, and Reddy clears. This brilliant sen senior and loses the ball on the dribble. Temple with Mitchell. Darrell Mitchell takes it in. No goaltending. Yes. Whistle comes from Jim Burr on the outside. Basket good to LSU and Daryl Mitchell. LSU has fast hands and feet. You can see Garrett Temple just reaching in with that right arm across the body of J.J. Redick. Redick showed him the ball. And once that ball hit the backboard, it was coming down, and Josh McRoberts got it on the way down. Blue Devils shooting only 31% in the game from the floor. Nice move going inside by McRoberts. He has five. Well, Lazar's got to have a better closeout on that. You don't mind Josh McRoberts taking that shot, but you don't want to give up a layup on a poor closeout. Darnell Lazar, who replaced Tyrus Thomas in the first half and delivered 10 points off the bench, has returned for LSU. Out of bounds to the Tigers. And Daryl Mitchell will play it in. LSU trying to screen Davis down into that low post. Tasman Mitchell, who led the LSU with eight rebounds the first half. Davis able to pull his way inside. Oh, yeah. At 310 pounds, able to split that double team <laughs> like he's Tough thin. to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the guard tackle hole. Duke needs to go inside to Sheldon Williams. Let him work on Davis. Williams starts high. Now worked inside. And he's blocked by Lazar. Gets it back. Doctor, he can't connect. Good hands by Daryl Mitchell. Back to Big Dave. Throws it away. No, it was deflected by Duke out of bounds. And with that, a timeout. 4-10 into the second half. Lynn, big baby, Davis. This is what it's like when you're looking for a car on autotrader.com. It's the only... ...into the second... This is what it's like when you're looking for a car on autotrader.com. It's the only place you can see almost three largest selection. When you search from a selection this wide, no matter what you're looking for, on autotrader.com, you'll find exactly the car you want, just like that. So why go anywhere else? Autotrader.com, a smarter way to buy and sell a car. Jill. You know. Hey, here's the happy groom, Bill Mellon. Mellon, you gel. Down and sit and down. So is my new bride, Mrs. Stella. Helen, they Mellon. I'm so happy my eyes are wellin'. Did everyone try the prosciutto and melon? We put the softest gel ever in Dr. Scholl's massage and gel insoles. Like Mellon, you gel. I'm gelin' and sit and down. So is my new bride, Mrs. Stella. Did everyone try the prosciutto and melon? You put the softest gel ever in Dr. Scholl's massage and gel insoles. You and your feet will feel outrageously comfortable. Guaranteed. I'm gelling. You're so not gelling. Are you gelling yet? Dr. Scholl's. They're coming. Did everyone try the prosciutto? And Shoals massage and gel insoles. You and your feet will feel outrageously comfortable. Guaranteed. Gelling. You're so not gel. From their light beer. And they are angry. And they actually look happy. Huh. A taste revolution is brutal. Do
one destinations for just $49 to $159. Yeah, I have a little attitude, but I've earned it. I put in the hours, learn from the best, and I have no doubt that I can play at the highest level. Right now, I'm just... Orleans. Most good jazz musicians do. Hundred and sixty thousand NCAA student athletes, and just about all of us are going pro or something. Here's a for this year's Nays Trophy presented by Singular Gonzaga Junior forward. Morrison led the nation with a average during the regular season. That average was bolstered by his ability to sink more than 43% of his shots for three-point range. Now you can be a part of college basketball history. Text the word VOTE to 87654 to vote for the winner. More power than Mazda 6, and better fuel economy than Nissan Altima. Pontiac Torrent is the only one in class with both a V6 engine. Two fleeting years. Leave behind moments we'll always remember and take with them the spirit to excel in all they do. That's why the NCAA Corporate Family provides scholarships, sponsors youth programs, and supports all 23 NCAA. Sports. They know that while the excitement of college sports is shown in moments, value and take with them the spirit to excel in all they do. That's why the NCAA corporate family provides scholarships, sponsors youth programs, and supports all 23 NCAA sports. They know that while the excitement of college sports is shown in moments, the value lasts a lifetime. A new Survivor, CBS next Thursday. Is it this time? Yes! Let's go, dude! Let's go, dude! Duke on the game shooting 31% on the season, almost 50%. And credit that LSU defense. They've contested every shot. And LSU is long and athletic, and Garrett Temple has really been shadowing J.J. Redick everywhere he's been. He's been there on the catch, forcing him to put it down. Nice pad by Greg, and there's another block. Does not get the timeout call. He tried, but held ball, and the arrow points to Duke. Garrett Temple forcing J.J. Redick to put the ball on the floor, and it's been two or three dribbles to get it into the lane where Redick's got to score over those athletic shot blockers of the Tigers. He dropped it off to Sheldon Williams, and again, the shot sent back. This is a very good defensive team that probably doesn't get near the credit it deserves for being able to guard so effectively. The only man to penetrate that defense, Sheldon Williams with 15. The rest of the Duke roster was 16. Official conference. And back comes Tyrus Thomas, the 6'9 freshman from Baton Rouge McKinley High School. Didn't play basketball his freshman and sophomore year in high school. Was not heavily recruited. Sat out a redshirt year. Uh, grew two inches and gained 30 pounds. And now 6'9 and 215. And the number two score in the season for the Tigers. John Brady wanted to bring Tyrus Thomas in as a walk-on, but they just happened to have a scholarship available. Can you imagine that? Shot clock at 2-1. McRoberts, it'll count if it goes. And there's Sheldon Williams to clear. And uh, so patient, using a variety of moves. That's just what a senior brings to a, a team and why they're so valued by all the coaches around the country. Well, he's so strong, and he understands that Tyrus Thomas is in foul trouble, and Thomas cannot be as aggressive shot blocking. Thomas takes it inside to Davis and over the top. Foul will be called on McRoberts. He knew it. His second. Sheldon Williams gets the ball underneath. Off the rebound. Immediately takes it back in. The spin move. The up and under. And just hesitates in order to get Tyrus Thomas off the floor so he can go up as Thomas was coming back down. 
Here's Glenn Davis, an honor student, 3.2 grade point average. 69.5% free throw shooter on the season. He's missed both attempts tonight. Took ballet in high school, not because he wanted to improve his footwork. He had a, eyes on a young girl he wanted to impress. Tailback at 350 pounds, an honor student, and he has a tremendous personality. This young man is going to be successful basketball or whatever when he leaves LSU. Ought to have his own talk show. What an engaging kid. Five point lead for LSU. They've led since. Duke gave up uh, the advantage at 10 8 early in the game, and they give up the ball on this occasion. Bill Mitchell deflected by Paulus. Give him credit. Reddick on the run. Pulls up for a 12 footer. Nelson back in the game. Demarcus Nelson. Well, JJ Reddick has no rhythm at all in this ballgame, has not handled the pressure very well that he's received from LSU. <laughs> Look at the jerseys were hooked up. Actually, Reddick was inside Temple's jersey. Fans wanted to follow Temple, but it was Reddick who had moved his hand up through Temple's uniform. Paulus for three. Rims out. And uh, Thomas, the rebound for LSU. Duke three for 15 shooting in the second half. Reddick is two for 10 in the game. We've got to give a lot of credit to Garrett Temple. He's been magnificent defensively. Big baby blocked and then a foul as Thomas picked up the loose ball. And Sheldon Williams has his second. LSU's defense on J.J. Reddick has been terrific. Big baby comes up makes him force it that pass to try to get rid of it after the double team and then the step back dribble and Garrett right in his face doing a terrific job getting late pressure on that shot and right now JJ Reddick can get no rhythm at all offensively every possession LSU making him put the ball on the floor to take multiple dribbles into a shot Missed free throw by Tyrus Thomas hitting 67 percent on the year looking for his first point of the game as Darnell Lazar returns for LSU and uh, J.J. Reddick gets a seat on the Duke bench as he's given a breather. And Mike Krzyzewski talking to him one on one. That's a bit unusual. Usually Krzyzewski would send an assistant to say something, but this is important right now. His five point lead for LSU over Duke. Meanwhile, Memphis holds a five point lead on Bradley out in Oakland. They're getting ready to start the second half. Thanks for joining us on Singular at the half. Back to Oakland in just a moment. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, raising the bar. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the Men's Basketball Championship is sponsored by Microsoft. Coca-Cola. ATL and by Cadillac. Thirty-five thirty, Memphis with the lead as we start the second half and a look at the halftime stats. Well, the key to this game, obviously, are the turnovers. 14, 14 Bradley turnovers, 16 Memphis points off those turnovers. The good news is that Bradley has beaten Memphis on the boards plus eight. But the bottom line is that Patrick O'Brien, three of five from the field, seven points. He needs more touches. When he touches the ball, it forces the Memphis defense to go into scramble mode as they double team. And Bradley can pick out some offensive players that have some opportunity to score. So we start the second half. Bradley and Red with the basketball, roughings the point guard, Somerville O'Brien. And Twy, along with Tony Bennett. Twy guarded by Carney with the ball down. And just you know the key is not so much the turnovers, the points off turnovers, it's the open floor types of turnovers. The steals by Memphis, eight steals thus far, and they've led to a number of points in transition. Inside rebound Somerville and he can't get the bounce ripped out of the air by Carney. Here comes the All-America Almost lost it to Dorsey who lays it up and in And again in transition even off the boards Memphis wants to make this a track meet Inside Somerville blocked by Dorsey and a foul coming up 
And this one will go against Sean Williams. Let's compare the stars this evening. Well, we knew Rodney Carney, Darius Washington, in the beginning of the first half, really started to get their game going. Patrick O'Brien, I mentioned, didn't really get the touches he needs. And Marcella Somerville saddled with a little bit of foul trouble in the first half. Starting to get back to basics, going to the basket strong. That time he drew the foul, he's on the line. Williams picked up his second foul as Marcellus Somerville steps to the line. He picked up two quick fouls at the head of the bench. Uh, one of two from the line. And this will be against Memphis. Somebody on the Tigers getting in the lane too early. Looks like Dorsey. Second free throw off the mark. 37-31. Bradley as a team, 5-10 from the free throw line. Memphis 2 of 5. So important for Memphis to create some separation here. Because as this game stays close, as you get around the 10-minute mark, the higher seeds, as has been the history, start to get a little tight. And the little guys stay in the ball game. 12 points for Darius Washington Jr. And he is the leader for this Memphis team today. Somerville posting up Williams, the freshman. Tried to get him in the air, lead, had it blocked. Boy, that's the length and the athleticism of Memphis. Carney at three, counted. Memphis rolling now. Bradley needs a timeout, largest lead of the game for the top-seeded Tigers, 42-31. Excuse me, gorgeous. Can I get it to you for a second? Just did. Bye. So you just gonna fake it till you make it, huh? I've been saving this for three years. So you can get out of here. Man, I need to get myself one of these. Take a ride with your boy. Come on. You ain't gotta be a dope boy to have money. On March 31st, it all comes down to family. I believe in you even when you're too stupid to believe in yourself. Tim T.I. Harris. You got a problem with my brother, but you deal with me. Big boy. That was so disrespectful. ATL. Rated PG-13. Starts March 31st. Watch a game, aren't you worried about them drinking all the Bud Light? Not to worry. Look what I had installed. A secret revolving wall. Dude, you're a genius. Guys, hurry up! The magic bridge is back! Refreshingly smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. Magic fridge. Magic fridge. walks through the front door every day. Will they be ready? Ready to have ideas? To build relationships? To help customers? And invent new products? Ready to make a difference? If they have the right software, they will. People Ready Software. Microsoft. Software for the People Ready Business. at Powerade's power in the paint. Well, it comes down to shot blocking by Memphis. Four blocks on the day. Again, establishing themselves in the paint and sending a message. And Bradley, on the other hand, block shots have been a staple of their defense. They average five a game. They've got zero today. Mem Memphis has jumped out to its largest lead of the game with a 13-2 run after the game was tied at 29 apiece. Reversal, rough and wide open. 
Loose ball, rebounded by Washington. And he quickly gets it into the front court. Tigers open the game with a 7-0 run to begin. And then in the second half, they, they've started with a 7-1 run. We'll take a look right here. Just trying to go after the ball. And inadvertently gets Sean Williams in the mouth. Somerville picks up his third. Now Williams. Off balance. O'Brien with another rebound. He now has 12. He's got the rebounds. He needs the touches on offense. His team doesn't seem to want to give it to him where he can use it. That's not where he can use it. And no man's land now. Gives it up to a guard. Ruffin. Bennett. Nice look. Fly. Can't lay it in, but he's fouled. And J.J. Twy, the junior, will go to the line. Dorsey called for the foul, and that's his first. And that's Twy's second trip to the line for two shots, and he's averaging two points a game. You wonder why Memphis is taking the time to foul. Win an NCAA-related prize every 35 seconds at mycokerewards.com slash NCAA. Gets a pair. Cuts the lead to nine. Back in the game, Lawrence Wright. As Twy heads to the bench, he really helped turn this team this season around for Bradley. JJ Twy came in the lineup and served as a starter, primarily responsible for locking up the opposition's best player. And he was the perfect fit for this team. Really helped their chemistry out, and they've been. Winning a lot of games since 13 of their last 16. There's JJ. And after that turnover by Memphis, John Calipari really upset with his team for not executing. Bradley extended their defense and forced that Aaron pass. You can't afford, if you're Memphis at a time you're trying to build a lead, you can't afford what's sometimes an unforced error. And O'Brien tied up. Possession arrow favors Memphis. No field goals for Bradley. Since the 433 mark of the first half. And again, recognizing that John Calipari gets upset with his team when they don't execute in the half court. And you know, Bradley is applying some pressure defense. Washington straight down the lane. The kick Carney again. Short. Anderson rebound. Can't stick it in. Tracked down by Wright. Wright, heavy traffic down the lane. No call. Nice block. As Carney got back down the floor. Wide open and they found him. Now up the triple, no, and he's fouled. And that's exactly and what a technical means. foul has been called against Memphis is Joey Dorsey. Ted Valentine tees him up, and Joey may not know, but Ted Valentine is the wrong guy to give lip to. Well, that when I was <laughs> mentioning before, when Rodney Carney went to the basket attacking that rim, he didn't settle for the three. Exactly what Memphis needs, but that technical is not what they need. You know, this is a question again of a guy like Joey Dorsey, just a sophomore, trying to maintain his composure at a time when his team is starting to create some separation between themselves as the number one seed and Bradley, the 13th seed. And again, after the play, there's a little set to right there. And the foul was already called. I'm pretty sure that Joey Dorsey didn't really care about that. He just wanted to make his case known to Lawrence Wright, but it was the wrong time in the wrong place, and as you said, in front of the wrong guy, Ted Valentine, who was a taskmaster for discipline out there on the floor. Uh, Somerville makes the first. Joey Dorsey from Baltimore, Maryland. Great kid. Great personality. He was trying to get at your barbecue potato chips <laughs> yesterday during practice. Well, we talked about Memphis trying to create some separation. Two shots now, seven point game. Rodney Carney has the match right here. 
Carney, the first All-America at Memphis since 1996. Gets the first free throw, puts up great numbers, 17 a game. 39% from the three-point line. 70% free throw shooter. And again, he's a complete package. He can handle, he runs the floor well, shoots the three, and will attack that rim. And Coach Calipari challenged him this season to play better defense. And he has. He's been out in the passing lanes, creating steals. O'Brien to Ruffin. Now Bennett, ball fake, off the dribble, short, tipped around, Somerville banks it home. Now the winner of this game will take on the winner of Gonzaga, UCLA. Our next game, Carney, turnaround jump shot, and he's starting to get loose. Rodney Carney with 16 at 9 at halftime. You see, Bradley needs to get back to doing what they just did in the last possession. Even though O'Brien didn't shoot the ball, when he touched it, Memphis defense had to adjust. You get a shot, people are open on the weak side for offensive rebounds. Just an awful lot of opportunities created by getting the ball into the big fella. Foul coming up against Memphis. Dozier, 15-41 to play second half, 46-37 Tigers. It's an entirely different class of Mercedes-Benz. The R-Class Grand Sports Tourer. More headroom for you. This series has even more Marsh Madness coverage throughout the tournament. Get your degree in madness at CSTV. Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg, Seth Davis in New York with an update for you. LSU and Duke Sheldon Williams will convert here on the nice little assist, but Sheldon Williams just drew his fourth personal foul, and that could spell trouble for the Duke Blue Devils. 47-43, Duke in the lead on a 16-3 run. Let's send you back to Oakland. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the Men's Basketball Championship is sponsored by DirecTV and by Mercedes-Benz. 46-37, Memphis with the lead and the foul inside is right, attacks the basket. Gus Johnson, Len Elmore with you. Bradley is one for its last 13, missing 12 straight field goals, bridging the first and second halves. Coach Les remaining calm on the sideline. As Lawrence Wright sinks the first. He has seven points now, a senior. And again, staying within striking distance. Obviously, Patrick O'Brien, seven touches this half, but no shots. And again, you attribute that to the swarming defense, a double down by Memphis. But the effectiveness of it for Bradley would be that he gets other people opportunities. Largest lead, 11 points for Memphis. They led by as many as seven in the first half. Bradley by as many as two. Sean Williams backing his man down. Big time moves. And that's a freshman. Sean Williams, tremendous athlete. You can post him and he can shoot the three. Williams with seven. Right. Strip. Loose. And jump ball is the call. Bradley will hold on. College basketball fans. Here's your chance to win great prizes. Get your cyber ticket at cbsportsline.com slash cyber ticket and enter to win now. Anderson in Washington head to the bench. Douglas Roberts and Andre Allen come in the game for Memphis. Somerville fadeaway three. See, I'm wondering why Bradley is keeping O'Brien at the high post. They take shots. Nobody there to offensive rebound. O'Brien's got four offensive rebounds. Keep him around the basket on the weak side to put back misses. And a foul call. It's Bennett picking up his third. He'll stay in the game. Ruffin heads out, and Will Franklin replaces him. Now Cooper posting up. Has it blocked. Douglas Roberts there, and he banks it in. First field goal of the 
evenings with Chris Douglas Roberts, the freshman from Detroit, very talented young player. And look at the pressure Andre Allen is putting on Franklin, pointing the ball. Bennett, off balance shot, loose ball stolen, right, and a foul on Allen. Rodney Carney has had a big night so far. Well, we mentioned the best player on the floor. Complete package outside, inside. Terrific defender. We've seen him get out in the passing lanes and create opportunities on the steal. Andre Allen picked up his third foul, and that will send right to the line. Don't forget. TV's number one new drama comes your way Tuesday, 9, 8 Central, after NCIS The Unit. <laughs> 50 to 41, Memphis. Washington back in the game along with Williams, Carney, Douglas Roberts, and Cooper. Carney, guarded by Wright, good matchup. Washington backs it up. High pick and roll. Darius off the bounce. The teardrop got it. And you know, he was practicing that yesterday in their shooting drills. I mean, to the point where some of his teammates said, oh no, not the runner. But he's put it to good use. Lost it over the outreach storm for the seven footer. Somerville passed up a three. Right to the basket and banks it home. A little contact there, but Lawrence Wright, we said he could be a difference maker. Tough matchup with his vertical leap at 44 inches, 7-foot wingspan, and a 6-4 packet. We grew up on Beale Air Force Base, which is about 45 miles north of San Francisco. Inside, Cooper, and he traveled. Good defense by Bryant. O'Brien not allowing Cooper to get him in the air. Seven turnovers now for Memphis. As Cooper heads out, Joey Dorsey will replace him. Winner of this game will take on the winner of our next game, Gonzaga and UCLA. Bennett, hard to the basket. High off the glass and in. Bennett with nine now. Remember we said at the beginning of this half, Memphis has got to create separation in that first five to seven minutes. Otherwise, if Bradley stays in the game as the lower seed, they start to get full of themselves, and the higher seed, as has happened throughout this tournament, starts to get tight. 12.42 to play, 52-45. Bradley trying to get back in this thing. Great action in the Sweet 16, West Virginia, Gansey, Pitsnoggle, Air Bear, and company will take on the Texas Longhorns. And our game here, we'll get a chance to see the rock star, <laughs> Adam Morrison, and the Bulldog from Gonzaga against UCLA. Those are two terrific matchups. And remember, West Virginia and Texas played earlier this year. Texas came out with a one-point win. Washington quick release. Off the mark. Carney with the rebound. Shot clock didn't reset. Sean Williams takes a three and hits. <laughs> oh, my. Just as easy as you want it to be, Sean Williams extends. And the lead is 10. The largest lead has been 11. Bennett steps back in the corner. He's been off tonight. Carney with the rake and take to Dorsey. Watch out, big fella. And he missed the jam. Look at Williams. Sean Williams, though. And it's jammed down by Carney. 12 points. And despite the missed dunk and the missed lay-in, you give Memphis credit for the hustle back. They got their rebounders down in a hurry. Make that 18 points for Carney. Inside Somerville, right for three. Bradley has a team 15 to 41 from the field. And you wonder if there's something wrong with O'Brien. O'Brien's only got two fouls. And Washington slicing down the lane. And a timeout called by the Braves. 
11-24 to play second half. Memphis with its largest lead, 59-45. Craig Gumbel in New York. Memphis with a 59-45 lead on Bradley. We'll keep tabs on this game for you. Meanwhile, in Atlanta, coming up on five minutes to play, LSU with a two-point lead on Duke. Let's join Dick Enberg and Jay Billis. The Tigers have clawed back in the lead. Now it's Reddick inside, denied. Thomas with another block, and trying to save it was Davis, but he stepped out of bounds. And for Tyrus Thomas, that is his fifth block of the game and he has altered many other shots well on the rare occasion when J.J. Redick has been able to get away from Garrett Temple's defense he gets past him off this drive then he's got to get past Big Baby and also Tyrus Thomas and Thomas the long arms the athleticism and the timing you'd see why he had seven block shots against UConn part of the story tonight J.J. Redick second leading scorer in the entire nation has scored only six points against the smothering LSU defense Six points on two for 13 shooting. LSU, LSU leading by two and the winner to play either West Virginia or Texas. They'll do battle in the second game. Garrett Temple, who has been hawking J.J. Reddick throughout the night, committed the foul. Sends Greg Paulus to the line. Paulus averaging just under seven a game on the season. And that's his sixth tonight on his first free throw attempt. And this one to tie it. At 49. Lucas spent a lot more time at the free throw line in the second half. They have attacked more off the dribble, moved the ball more from side to side. They haven't shot it well, but they've been much more effective in attacking this outstanding LSU defense. Duke on the season has made more free throws than their opponents have shot, so it is tonight. 11 free throws made to three. Four and a half minutes left here in the Georgia Dome. 49 all the score. Davis Ward's inside. There's Thomas again. A high point. Tyrus Thomas well above the rim once again. He has put on an aerial show. LS best offense has been a missed shot. They have really gone after the offensive glass, whether it's Tyrus. Three left gives Duke the lead by one. In this modern world of super technology, you, you know what really gets up. That last play, the offensive rebound by Tyrus Thomas. Greg Paulus reaching in as Thomas is going up. That's where the foul was called, not the contact up top by Sheldon Williams. Williams very fortunate that that foul called early on Paulus the line comes this uh, spectacular leaper Tyrus Thomas looking for his first free throw 0 for two tonight and that's uh, hurting LSU down the stretch the three for ten from the line this one to tie well, they're getting to the free throw line just not the right guys getting there they're better percentage shooters hits the second and with 303 left tied again at 52 what a battle for the Elite Eight. LSU and Duke. The heavy favorites uh, from Durham, North Carolina, the Blue Devils, from running into a tough defense. And there's Reddick frustrated again, thought he had the foul, but no whistle. Reddick getting the angle to the basket. And Garrett Temple coming from behind. That was all leather. A clean block from behind by Garrett Temple. Reddick. And Thomas able to save it. And out of bounds he goes over the photographers and takes a nasty spill. He missed four games at the end of the season with a bad ankle sprain. See that ball just getting knocked away and Tyrus Thomas stepping on that line. Ball had uh, struck the line too I think on the bounce Jay Billis but uh, a moot point now is it's Duke's ball. Greg Paulus will trigger it in 246 to go each side with 52. Been a while since Sheldon Williams has touched the ball. They might want to go into him and let him go to work. The two big men inside, the landlord Williams and Big Baby Davis, and inside goes McRoberts, and Williams gets the rebound. McRoberts over the top can't get it, and Davis embraces the ball. Watch out, Big Baby, you might deflate it if you squeeze too hard. Well, he did draw the foul from McRoberts, his third. 
A freshman foul by Josh McRoberts, fouling 94 feet from the basket. Sheldon Williams with a good opportunity, and McRoberts, a second chance going over the top of Davis, wasn't called for it, but this foul, not a smart play by the freshman, allows Big Baby to walk 94 feet and have the opportunity to put some points on the board. And Davis, one point away from double figures, he's scored 10 points or more every game this season. This bulky but actual sophomore from University High School in Baton Rouge. Top six players for this LSU team. Four of them went to Baton Rouge High Schools. Two others from within a perimeter of 50 miles. Another miss. Here comes Duke, 53-52, trailing LSU, 2.25 to go. Reddick loses the ball for a moment. Fans from both sides wanting to call the fouls. Look at Reddick work away from the ball. Finally found, finds an opening. Takes it inside, and it's knocked away from Williams. Pass ahead to Mitchell. What a play by the Duke player. Wilson goes all the way over the bench. It's Dockery. Sean Dockery out of sight as he went flying over the bench, and a timeout is called. Well, the LSU worked so hard to get that ball just to lob it up for anyone to grab and Dockery making a great play to save that back in bounds. Those are game winning plays. Sensational stuff in Atlanta. A minute 52 seconds left. Krzyzewski had to use a timeout. Didn't want to play four against five with Dockery uh, over the media bench and both teams in the one and one and the arrow favors Duke. Coach Krzyzewski talking with him yesterday he said my one concern is the energy level of my team coming out of the ACC tournament in the end of the year. He felt that they were a little flat in the first two rounds. Uh, certainly the energy's been there. Well they played well defensively. They've held this LSU team to 53 points. Their offense has not been crisp. In the second half worse than that 23 percent in large measure because J.J. Reddick can't find a shot. And credit the defense of Garrett Temple, the 6'5 freshman from Baton Rouge. He too went to University High School with Glenn Davis. Duke's uh, low shooting as a team all year against Boston University. That was the opener of the season. Which I shooting 29% against LSU tonight. line of this LSU defense those shot blockers on the back line have really bothered Duke and especially JJ Reddick when he's had to put the ball on the floor and dribble into a move and gets into the lane he's not been able to find anything and that's really unusual for him and give credit to the shot blockers and the big athletic bodies of this LSU team they got the standby horn going now and to eliminate the stuck buzzer that annoyed to eliminate the stuck buzzer that annoyed Concerned. Reddick, three for 17. Nine points for the second leading score in the country, averaging over 27 on the season. Well, his points have come off the three. He's for nine when LSU has pushed him inside of that three point line. And 50 to go. Duke with the ball, down by one. Roberts with Thomas. Thomas has four fouls. Fouls his tremendous leaping ability. You just wonder when you can get a shot off on him. He put out that left foot. Who Paulus nearly made a steal. Tasman Mitchell doing a lot. Or no, this is Temple. And uh, John Brady says it might be time for us to talk things over. 92 seconds left here in Georgia. The Tigers by one. Great, another Mazda City. Minute 32 left, LSU by one with the ball. Duke with the arrow, both teams in the bonus. For LSU.
great. Another Mazda City. Minute 32 left. LSU by one with the ball. Duke with the arrow. Both teams in the bonus. For LSU fans, you can't help but reflect 20 years ago when a Tiger team seeded 11th, the longest shot ever to make it to the Final Four, advanced to uh, the opportunity for a national championship. And they were lost in the semifinals as uh, John Brady's Tigers have taken on the number one seed in the tournament, the Duke Blue Devils, and played them dead even. They've led most of the way, and they lead now by one. Have to be mindful of Daryl Mitchell here and also inside. The initial shot defense has to be good, but the offensive rebound important as well. Davis misses the jump hook, and Duke brings it down, looking for the lead. Reddick sets up on the right corner. What he likes to do is uh, run the baseline. Now he goes inside this time. Sheldon Williams knocked away the defense from Tasman Mitchell. And then Davis has to fight off McRoberts. Ooh, that ball bounces off the chin of Daryl Mitchell. Back to Davis. Look at him run the floor. Out of bounds to LSU. 55 seconds to go. LSU needs to set good screens off this out of bounds play and see if they can get a slip. 55 seconds left. LSU by one. Daryl Mitchell off the handoff in the screen. Up with a runner. Taken away. Thomas. And then a foul is called. It's going to be on Duke. Paulus. Third on him. After that offensive rebound was kicked out, that was the time to get the ball to a guard. But Tyrus Thomas very fortunate to get the foul call there after he mishandled the ball and it was free on the floor. But Thomas has shown his troubles at the free throw line. As you see, John Brady's wife, Misty, pulling for Thomas to do something uh, he hasn't accomplished in this game, and that's hit free throws. He's only one for four. But what a rebounding game and blocking game he's had. Four, 13 rebounds and five blocks and uh, twice that many misdirected attempts because of his presence. And again, a meeting of the minds over at the scorer's table. Referees talking at the scorer's table. This essentially helping to freeze the free throw shooter, Thomas. LSU shooting only 5 of 13, making 5 of 13 from the line. And should they lose, they'll look back on that statistic as a major difference in the game. And an eight-second differential on the shot clock. Biggest free throws of this young man's life. Delivers on the first. Hits them both. Seven points in the game for Tyrus Thomas. Three-point deficit to Duke. J.J. Reddick, blocking foul called on LSU. Not a popular call. Boy, they knew the dribble handoff was coming. Daryl Mitchell took the risk of jumping in front, not giving J.J. Reddick any time. And you can see jumping in front, that was a good call. The referee really didn't have any choice but to call it. Not sure that's a risk you want to take in that situation to put a great free throw shooter at the line and stop the clock. That's a shocker just to see the double zeros there in the free throw column for Reddy, who just wears a path to the free throw line on the season. His first attempt tonight. Over a 91% free throw shooter in his great career at Duke. And missed five free throws uncharacteristically in his last ball game. This one to pull the Blue Devils within a point. 38 seconds left. Reddick makes both. 11 points in the game. That matches his low for the year against Temple. All the way. Thomas. He, once he got by Reddick's pressure, no one to stop him. Paulus down the lane. Blocked again. Thomas has just been sensational. Look at him. This redshirt freshman from Baton Rouge has been absolutely brilliant defensively, and now he gets the breakaway to give LSU the lead by three. Duke fell asleep defensively 
And Greg Paulus, knowing that they didn't necessarily need a three, taking it in too deep and challenging the superior shot-blocking ability of Tyrus Thomas. And this LSU team is on a high right now. Greg Paulus with a foul, his fourth. Mitchell will be at the line when we come back. Seconds to go, and the LSU Tigers, who have clawed throughout the game, they built a nine-point lead in the middle of the first half, 23-14, despite playing without their top two big men, Big Baby Davis and Tyrus Thomas. They have returned in the second half, and although Duke caught them, tied them, and took a five-point lead at 45-40, LSU right back in the lead by three, and here's Daryl Mitchell at the line. He squeaks in a free throw that makes it a two-possession game. And the pressure now really heavy on the shoulders of this number one seed, Duke Blue Devils team. How many big plays has Daryl Mitchell made for this LSU team all season long? Misses the second, but Davis gets the rebound. And he is fouled immediately. The rebounding strength of LSU just taking over in this late game situation. You can see Big Baby just using his mobility to get around Sheldon Williams. Williams doesn't even box him out. A very casual blockout by Sheldon Williams. Davis with a little push on Williams. Each man with four fouls. LSU eight for 17 from the line. But here in the clutch, they've delivered for John Brady. A five-point game. He motioning for his defense to go back and set up on the Duke half of the floor. Doesn't want to give up a cheap foul. Davis misses the second and gets that rebound, too. And he's fouled. Oh, my. A one-man show from Davis. Just when Tyrus Thomas took charge with his defense in that end-to-end -end drive and slam. Usually you don't see a team more alert than Duke, especially in a late-game situation, but there is no question that LSU has been the more alert team. Nobody blocked out the shooter. Nobody jumped into the lane. I think Duke felt since no one else was on the lane for LSU, they had a free rebound, and Big Baby showed him otherwise. Big Baby is like three men. They don't need all those other guys on the lane. So McRoberts fouls out with nine points. The freshman from Carmel, Indiana, McDonald's All-America, who's contributed as a starter from the opening bell for this Duke team and some of those faces uh, drawing longer and longer the men in white with three plus minutes to go Dick we talked about making plays down the stretch the team that made more plays was going to win and so far it's been LSU that's made those plays down the stretch this man at the line Glenn Davis maybe his nickname's Big Baby Baby but he adds new meaning to Baby Boomer John Brady's Underdog fourth seeds now lead by six. It's going to take a miracle now for the Blue Devils. 19 seconds to go. Got to guard that three point line without fouling. Ready. Can't hit the three again. Who else? Davis ripping down the rebound to draw the foul with nine seconds to go. And the Tiger fans stand as one. So do the Texas fans and the West Virginia fans. No one wanted to play Duke. All of a sudden, this bracket has opened wide. And Mike Krzyzewski coaching perhaps for his last time with J.J. Redick and Sheldon Williams in the lineup. Nine seconds to go, down six. Two consensus All-Americans just seconds away from their final bow here in Duke. And uh, what an ugly taste for them. Wallace is out with his fifth foul. He scored seven. What an extraordinary effort by this young LSU team. And we underscore young. This is a team of freshmen and sophomores. The only senior, Daryl Mitchell, has really led this team through to an extraordinary victory. Davis with some frosting. And that just about removes any faint doubt as Reddick goes out to... A deserved applause and a hug from Coach Gay. Oh, that's the heartbreak goes with it, folks. The madness brings the elation, and 
seems like that as well. What a great player. Arguably uh, one of the two best in the nation this year. But Glenn, big baby Davis, hits both free throws. Now it's academic. Dockery is allowed to go ahead. End to end and a reach in foul. No, he, no, he drove it out of bounds. He took it right out of bounds and it will end in the hands of the 310 pound Davis and the LSU Tigers with a big upset of this 2006 NCAA championship John Brady and his the number one seed overall in the tournament the Duke Blue Devils bow out LSU the first entry into the Elite Eight let's take you to Oakland once again Gus Johnson and Len Elmore 3.24 to play in the second half. Memphis with the lead and LSU. How about this? Huge upset. Defeating Duke. Big Baby and company. J.J. Redick, 3 of 18 from the field. LSU awaits the winner of West Virginia and Texas. But what a great career it's been for J.J. Redick playing his final collegiate game. Oh, absolutely. I mean, J.J. Redick, obviously the leading scorer in ACC history. Conference player of the year, maybe national player of the year. Three minutes to play in the second half. Memphis with the 74 58 lead. They led by as many as seven in the first half, and the Tigers have led by as many as 17 here in the second half. Well, it's been a game where Memphis, when they're focused and they're playing the defense, Extending the defense, creating turnovers as they did in the first half, vaulted out to a lead, and in the second half, created separation by hitting the backboards, getting their big guy, Rodney Carney, involved offensively. In the corner, Somerville, and he rattles one home. Somerville with 18 points, but is 4 of 13, 1 of 4 from the three point line. And again, we talk about the defense. Bradley shooting just 35% from the field, and a lot of that has to do with the Tigers' defense. Long, lean, and quick, bothering shots, stealing the ball, taking away good position, particularly down low. Washington down the lane, and he's been hitting that shot all evening. Washington, 18 points. Memphis takes a 76 to 61 lead. Inside, Carney just taking it away from Bennett. Bennett close to getting a technical foul if he's not careful. So don't forget, coming up tonight, West Virginia, Texas will tip it off at 10 01 and the final game of the evening. Adam Morrison and the Zags will take on Jordan Farmar and the Bruins from UCLA. A two versus a three here in Oakland, California. And also, Gus, the key to this game is Memphis, during stretches, is able to, was able to make this game a 94-foot game. You know, getting out and running on the break, getting transition points, and that took Patrick O'Brien out of the ball game. O'Brien, terrific game against Pittsburgh, 28 points today, only eight points. He had 14 rebounds, so he was a factor on the board, but a non-factor offensively. And during this last couple of minutes, he's been on the bench. As Bradley has tried to make this run, he saw Jim Les give Tony Bennett, the senior, a hug, his fifth foul, and his last game as a Bradley Brave. Nine points for Bennett, native of Chicago, Illinois, Westinghouse High School. In the two seasons he's been here, he's started every single game. And it's Rodney Carney leading the way for Memphis, 23 points tonight. Inside, baseline jump shot off the mark for Zach Andrews, who just checked in. As Memphis walks it into the front court. Here's Washington. Again, down the lane, stripped this time by Ruffin. Franklin the other way, straight to the cup. Can't lay it in, rebounded. Anderson lobs it to Washington in the front court, and he's stripped by Ruffin. And even though you have this lead, if you're Memphis, you still want to be careful with the ball. You want to stay in good habits. 
You know, Bradley's not giving up. That delay that Memphis is running in their half court at this point in time could be considered kind of a mercy delay. But Bradley doesn't want any of that. They want to keep playing, try to turn you over, try to get some opportunities with the three-point shot. People believe they're never out of it. Just not a good shooting evening for Bradley. 19 of 58. 33 percent Memphis 30 of 58 52 percent shooting and here's a wholesale substitutions by Memphis and our Chevrolet MVPs Marcellus Somerville 18 and 8 and Rodney Carney 23 points and you give an honorable mention to Darius Washington Jr. at 10 points in the first half and finished with 18 as both teams put their subs in the game. So this Lenny will set up a matchup of the winner of UCLA Gonzaga, our next game of the evening. Memphis, as you mentioned earlier, defeating both of those teams this year. And again, quite a matchup. Again, Memphis with their defense, their long lean and quick defenders. You know, able to shut down Adam Morrison if possible or if necessary, even though Morrison went for a lot of points against Memphis. But in the second half, when it counted, Memphis able to put a blanket on him. And of course, again, matching up with Aaron Afalo of UCLA, their leading scorer and best player. The Memphis Tigers are heading to the Elite Eight. They stopped the Cinderella season of Bradley with an 80 to 64 win. So the number one seed in Oakland advances as the Tigers defeat the Bradley Braves 80 to 64. The bracket here in Memphis. One game remaining for the Tigers to head to the final four. They will await the winner of Gonzaga UCLA. Congratulations, Coach Cal. 80-64, the final. Memphis Tigers survive and advance. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports on our 25th road to the final four. We'll send you to Greg Gummel in New York with the road to the final four, powered by Pontiac, right after this.